Yay! It finally works. <laughs> it does. Okay. Chapter 6. We're getting quite far in this already. Of 23. <laughs> Say oh, that. 253, as you said before. I know. I'm weird like that. Okay. Here we're we go. still affected from the sugar because it's literally like a minute after Bzzz. we. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid phone. What? It's literally like that was me. a minute after we um uh, recorded chapter five as yeah. well, and we've got like a load more to go. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, 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 yeah. this one is Danny's point of view this time. Enjoy. Here's what my week looked like. Shit day. Shit day. Shit day. Shit day. Do you want to come over shit day? <laughs> <laughs> Friday evening. Saturday. Sunday. Audition time. That's how I mark my agenda. No, not with red lines and glitter. Oh. I found blue a more fitting colour. <laughs> Tuesday morning, I packed my bag and got ready for school. Mum gave me the, one of those. Oh, oh God, no, no, I'm not five kisses on the cheek since she can't reach my forehead anymore. Do I look forward to going to school again? If I got to see Dylan, yes. If I got to see Aaron, no fucking way. In fact, when I thought about Aaron, I always crawled back into bed again. Mm. He'd e he would either give me the silent treatment or he'd explode in front of the whole school. I didn't even want to know which one it was going to be this time. I took a deep breath and walked into school. The undead guys called for me when I passed, but I didn't feel like openly backstabbing Aaron. Speaking of Aaron, I hadn't encountered him yet. That's... that is, until I reached my locker. He ambushed me there. Did I scare you? He laughed. <laughs> I froze in place. Kinda. What was his deal? Why wasn't he pissed off? Why didn't he scream or silently agonise me with my weakness? Where did the torture go? Now I knew my best friend very well, and he would not let this slip. Aaron waved his hand right in front of me. Did you not hear me? <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> You're so absent. What the way he did you text me back yet? I never, I, I never got your big news that would hurt me. Aaron said, confused. I bit my lip. Oh, right. You didn't receive it? I sent you the news. No, I didn't get anything. Tell me now. I saw it thickly. I must have up some courage. Aaron's hopeful gaze eyed me worriedly. Then I blurted out the news. I watched season three of My Little Pony without you. I'm so sorry. Aaron widened his eyes. You what? You're such a jerk. You ruined Brownie Friday. I know. I shouldn't have done that. I apologise. But what can I say? I was weak. I couldn't break my best friend's heart until my old audition for his role in the band he got kicked out of. What kind of a friend does something like that? Maybe I had to call it off. No. No holding back for someone else. I've put other sake before mine for a long time, but not anymore. What's that? Would you stop thinking about my Brony Friday? Yes, Aaron and I have Brony Fridays to let out our inner child. Everyone has a guilty pleasure, and we found My Little Pony to be quite educative when it came to our fears and friendships. It is. I watch it. It's great. Uh, I'm <laughs> <laughs> I closed my, my locker and walked Aaron to class. Much to my dismay, we had to pass the end bed. Aaron scoffed when he, when he passed, but I showed an awkward smile. That's when Jordan ruined it for me. <gasps> Danny, why are you still hanging out with the backstabber? Aaron turned towards the guys. Leave Danny alone. He's unlike you, a real friend. Is, Is that why you hear this beautiful voice from us? I ducked my head. Shut up. He never hid my voice. I'm just too shy to sing in public. With those words, I pulled Aaron with me into the classroom. The undead followed us inside. Usually they sit in the back, but this time they were spread out. Dylan next to Angie. <coughs> Barf. Jordan and Matt in the far back. <coughs> Joel and George right behind me. It almost seems like they were angry with each other. But it could be because their place was taken by some other kids. I sighed deeply. How in the hell was I going to tell Aaron I was about to audition for his band? I didn't know. Maybe fate was trying to tell me that I shouldn't by erasing that text message. What if we received that message later on today? How would I explain my lie to him? No wondering about that stuff. That's just depressing. When the bell rang late, I left class as soon as possible. I didn't wait for Aaron. Didn't wait for the undead. I just had to leave. I was freaking out inside because of the sheer possibility Aaron would see my last te mes text message or that the undead would tell Aaron I was auditioning. I ran away. Not into my next class, but outside. I went outside and just hid myself on a bench behind the corner. I rubbed my eyes tiredly and thought about my next move. I was auditioning, that's for sure, but how would I deal with my fears of singing in public? Maybe I would overcome it if I didn't think about the public. I did sing for 
Jordan and Matt, after all, when I didn't know there was an audience. First I had to find a way to tell Aaron the big backstabbing news. Would he ditch me or support me? I've asked myself that question so many times. If I told Aaron I was strict with a curve, would he ditch me or support me? I didn't know. Would we overcome the mountain of betrayal or would we remain thick-headed? Would I even miss Aaron when I become part of Hollywood Undead? I didn't know. There was just so much uncertainty in my next step with Aaron. He and I could stop our friendship over this audition or over my sexual preference. Let's just say our friendship ended and I became part of Hollywood Undead. Then I'd have five new best friends. Then I would tell Dylan about my crush on him and I'd lose five best friends. Then I'd have no one. What would I do if I had no one? Live on? End it? Would I care? I didn't know. My phone beat. A text message. You okay? I didn't reply. As much as I adored the guy, I didn't want to talk to him about these matters. He would think I was a total girl for dwelling on those problems. He's a go-getter, not a thinker. I skipped one hour of class and sat there as I had a free period. Another text message appeared on my phone. If you ran off, something big must be going on you can't talk to me about it. I'm worried. Please, talk to me. My reply? Just need a place for my head. Don't worry. I didn't want to discuss this with Dylan, but I also didn't want to discuss it with Aaron. I turned off my phone and looked through my bag. A sheet on pencil. I wonder if I still knew my little tricks from my art class I once took. I placed the sheet onto a hard mat for support. I slid the tip of the pencil smoothly over the sheet and drew a line. Then another and another. A sketch unfolded beneath, beneath my pencil. Amazing. I didn't know you were an artist. I yelped in surprise and hid away the sheet. Matt, what are you doing here? Free period, Matt said. He took out a cigarette and a lighter. I come here to smoke at our free period. Don't worry, the guys aren't coming. I let out a release sigh. Matt casted a slight glance at me. What's up with you? Stresses. Wanna tell me about it? Matt asked, offering a cigarette. I don't smoke. Come on, you relax, the drummer st stated. I reluctantly accepted it and he lit it for me. First time I coughed, but I quickly figured out how I was supposed to inhale it. It did help me relax after a while. I sighed once again and I could like I could breathe out all the stresses inside. I'm keeping two secrets from Aaron. He'll find out both and he'll break our friendship over both. Matt let out a small chuckle. Take over Matt. If he does, <coughs> he's not a real friend. One of them is the fact that I'm backstabbing him by auditioning. I entrusted him. The curly haired guy breathed out the smoke and sat down beside me. Uh, he should support you nonetheless. Hell, I've got four best friends and they've supported me for every stupid little thing. I was in hospital for a minor operation. They refused to go and stayed for the night. I was wasted as fuck and kissed John. He shook it off. I dated Gerald's sister and cheated on her and he chose my side. Those are real friends. They support me no matter how many times I fuck them up or back to them unintentionally. If you want something, you should go for it, no matter what people think. I swallowed thickly and stomped on the cigarette. It's just too complicated to fix it like that. There's too much shit going on. I've got time. Mark grinned. I shook my head. I don't want you to dislike me either, so, uh, no thank you. It's fine, really. Wait, a secret that will make everyone dislike you? I didn't say that. Yeah, you did. What could that be? Did you kill someone? Sip with Angie? Steal someone's phone? Are you gay? Kill someone? Do you think I could kill? I asked him skeptically. Matt smirked. I guess not. Anyway, just don't worry about shit. Enjoy being a teenager. Get drunk, smoke weed, bang chicks or dudes. It doesn't matter. No one cares. You're so carefree. I laughed. <laughs> he nodded. I'm quite open-minded, which is why the guys keep calling me a fag. They call you a fag? I inquired. Yeah, they always say I let John bend me over and that kind of shit. Secretly, Jarrell wishes George would do that to him. Matt laughed. <laughs> I'm kidding. None of us are gay or anything. We just joke about it. Though, I seem to have a habit to try and make out when I'm drunk. Jordan hates it. I see. Good to know. <laughs> Yay! Chapter 6, done. And I let Jess take over Matt's part halfway through because my voice is like, nope. Yeah. Nope. It happens. Anyway, Bye. see you in the next part.